Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week on YouTube. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and most podcast players. We hope you enjoy the episode. Did you know that today is apparently Blue Monday? Yeah, I heard this on the radio. The most depressing day of the year. I feel all right. I feel feel great, actually. Yeah. Because it's sunny. I'm like, I'm buoyed by the start of a new year. You know, I always like a new year. Yeah. Fresh start and all that. We've got some exciting plans ahead. I've been busy all morning booking trips for later in the year. And I'm like, blue who? Spring is coming. I'm like, what's a good colour? Green Monday. (laughs) Would it be green? I don't know. (laughs) No. But I never get where that comes from. Why is today Blue Monday? Why is this? So supposedly this is the most depressing day of the year, but why? Who decided that? Some kind of marketing firm? Well, I think because all your festive experiences are long behind you and now it's time to pay for it all. I guess. Time to knuckle down. The credit card bills have come in. Don't tell me about it. Yeah. (laughs) They come in for me all the while. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Whether you're out there feeling a bit blue, we hope to bring you a little bit of green or yeah. something today. Uh, even though it's not Monday, actually, by the time you're listening to this, it's no longer Monday. If you're listening to the audio only, it's obviously uh, live from, from Tuesday. Uh, if you're listening to the, or you're watching the video, it's obviously live from a Thursday. But we're recording this on a Monday, hence the Blue Monday chat. Uh, anyway, mate, tell me what's been going on, what have you been up to? You told me you've been selling cars, which is very unlike you. Well, I've, <laughs> well, I've always sold cars, mate. I mean, it's well, just sometimes I don't, sell, the last year. <laughs> don't sell enough of them. But um, yeah, we've had a busy start to the year. I think everyone has in general. I think it's picked up a bit. But um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's out of tradition. Normally, January is okay for the motor trade because always the last quarter of the year is always quieter anyway. So there's a bit of a pimped up demand and January, February, March is normally okay and... Um, yeah, it started off as I expected. I expected it to be to be busier. Have you had any cars that towards the end of the last year you were just thinking, "Oh my god, please, someone just buy this thing." Please, that's finally gone. Oh, uh, oh all of them. No, <laughs> yeah, no. no. You didn't have one outlier specifically that you were like, "I need to get rid of that." Uh, I I literally sold one this morning. Um, that. Um, yeah, was okay. at a loss. That Are you a comfortable saying or you don't want to say until it's out the door? No, no, no. As in, I've got a deposit on it. But yeah, it's at a loss. And I sold a Range Rover Evoque last week that was, um, I think it's probably a four grand loss, that car. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got Range Rovers in stock that are at 10 grand losses and I ain't even sold them yet. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's the way of the world, mate. Like I said, it, what goes around comes around. We all had a lovely time in between... Um, you know, when COVID come back, we all earned a load of money and now we're giving some back. No, but hold on a sec. I don't think we can make outlandish <laughs> statements like this. No. So I got in trouble because I put up on Instagram <laughs> within the last week. At what point do Romas become cars that we should all just go out and buy? Because they were like, I found an, one was going on auction at like 115 grand. And someone was like, it's probably a bit punchy to be like, we should all go and buy Romas because it's still what? a 100,000 pound car. You can't say... No. Oh, we all had a great time when COVID came back. We all made a ton of money. Because I imagine again. some people had a crap time around COVID. <laughs> I, I, I would imagine that some industries were terrible, but they're having a nice time now. So um, like the aviation industry and the hospitality industry were dead. Fair. You didn't quanti- qualify. You didn't say motor industry. You just said we all. As in like people in general had a lovely time no. when COVID came back. No, as in I'm, when I say we, I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> fine uh, maybe i'm overthinking things but when somebody pointed out that mm-hmm. i went oh yeah probably i probably am sometimes i probably do this think uh, in my own little bubble a bit too much yeah and i thought i'd yeah just you anyway. thought you'd pull me up on it yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. all right mate well uh, well i'm glad you're selling cars um if you are suddenly uh, back to uh, car purchasing ways um feel free to yeah, get involved get involved he's yeah. got plenty of stock lying around that he's desperate to get rid of absolutely uh, um, well, I I popped into central London at the weekend. So did I, uh, actually. But did go you? On. I did, yeah. Oh. A couple of times, but okay. Oh, I'm surprised we didn't cross paths. Yeah. Uh, we had my nephew staying, so we took him to the Natural History Museum, which was chaos. 
busiest place in the world on a Saturday. Uh, but it meant that I got to do a little bit of casual car spotting. No, uh, you didn't. I did, because obviously we were walking around and I was in central London. It was a Saturday. I haven't been <laughs> car spotting in London at the weekend for donkey's years. No. So I thought I'd take advantage as we were having a stroll. I was just like in my own world, just looking at bits going by. Uh, 812 Competizione I saw. Wow. Lovely extended wheelbase, dark green Bentley Bentayga. Um, plenty of like Hurricanes and F8s, a really loud C63. Oh, I think, <laughs> I think I saw the new C63 estate. I'm not even joking. Well, you wouldn't have heard it. Well, but also it doesn't look that different to the old one. Oh. Do you not think? Have you uh, seen one? Uh, yeah, I, I've not seen one in person, but I've seen photographs of it. I think it's, there's much more of an improvement inside, but maybe yeah, I'd agree on the that. outside. There's, so I was a bit like, oh, was that? Before I got really excited, I was like, was that it or not? But anyway, long story short, first weekend in January, it was popping off. Yeah. It, there were cars everywhere, mate. I was getting, I was, I, I got quite excited. Actually. Did you? Yeah. Did you get gonna... your Polaroid thing out? Or you... <laughs> My Polaroid. What's it called? Leica. Leica is yeah. all it is. What's that thing you use on the back of your phone sometimes? Oh, no, the polarizer. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, yeah, the polarizer. No, Chill no, because yeah. it was a family day out. I was just taking advantage of the fact that I was in. Do you not do that sometimes? Like you're supposed to be doing family activities and you just kind of casually look at the cars in and around where you are? No, because I hate cars. <laughs> No, not really. Oh, that's a question. No, <laughs> no, I mean, I do. I always look at cars yeah. all, all the while. Because if you're off to Nando's with the family for lunch, when you're walking through the car Nando's, park. Nando's, you're joking. <laughs> well, sorry, McDonald's. <laughs> 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 Are you not walking through the car park going, oh, look at that RS4? And oh, look at that, it's a cheeky. Oh, you've jogged my brain. You know what I saw the other day that actually I thought was really cool? I always get this mixed up. I think it was the. I think it was the B7 RS4. The V8 one, not yeah. the turbocharged yeah. one. Like a 2013, 2014 car. I love those cars. Me too. Because I used to sell them when they were they were newish, right? And they do have real inherent problems now. But one come cruising past me on Saturday, actually. And I thought, that's a cool little wagon now. And that's unlike me to say something like that about a 10-year-old car. So what what inherent problems are you are you? What, what, what goes wrong with those cars? Catastrophic suspension issues. Because it's magna ride, magnetic Correct. ride? Correct. And that was too early for it? That was an early iteration or that was just a, it was just a disaster? From my point of view, <laughs> that suspension wasn't right from the factory because okay. we had new ones or nearly new ones and they used to bang and crash and used to take them back in and they'd say, no, so that's the characteristics of the car. <laughs> so, yeah, so this can't be right. Like so you're that, leaking shots yeah. on your GT3. Yeah. And, and at the time, the last one we had was probably, um, uh, was it before COVID? Probably, bef yeah, or around that time, two or three years ago, last time we had one in stock. And the uh, suspension had all gone right around the car, oh. four of them. And at the time, it was only Audi that could do it because of uh, they had the machine to refill the. Oh, because cool, because it's magnetic, right? It's yeah. literally in the what in the shocks or in the dampers? There's little mag like because it's little. It's mag magnets. Basically, well, yeah, little yeah. Me metal fillings, isn't it? And then yeah. the magnets just firm them up or yeah. loosen them off. I and suppose. it was a f it was a fortune. Mm, seven grand comes to mind. Wow. Yeah, just just for the suspension. What could you do about that? Could you just bolt on some Don't after buy it. No. <laughs> but there was no other fix. You couldn't like bolt on aftermarket. Well, you, like well, you could if you know. Mm. You know get, but no. Wow. You, I mean, no, you had to fix you have got to fix it, didn't you? Anything else go wrong on those cars? Uh, diff okay. rear um diff problems, gearbox now probably as well. Oh god. Yeah. That's so cool though. But what a car. Yeah. <laughs> And, and great value in the RS4 world because those Gen 1 RS4s are now really creeping up in the collector market. So the values of those, pretty insane. The new shape and the prior shape are still 40 or 50 grand. Those V8 ones sit really nicely at the sort of 20, 25 grand mark. Are, are they 20, 25 yeah, grand? Yeah, yeah. With some mileage on though, right? I'm sure. I'm sure like a really nice version is close to 30, but they're, yeah. they're a cheaper RS4. It's amazing, that car, because... When you think it was just about over 60 grand, that car was, mm. no? And it's still 30 grand now. I think, I don't know, we spoke about it a little bit last week. I think Audi RS models, actually, if you look at it, and I did the other day, God, they hold their money 
quite terrifyingly well. Even RS3s, mate. Who so, said that to you once? No, no. Oh, don't. Here we go again. I told you so. I literally just said, Tony, we mentioned it last week. I literally just said, Did you? we mentioned it I didn't last get that week. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Um, so do you remember one of our live events when last year, a guy came in a green previous gen RS3, or maybe it was two gens before RS3. And I just suddenly start thinking like, oh, See if I, oh, I'll see if I can find a green RS3. What what age would that have been? 2012? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, the... Oh, this is where I get confused. So the latest car came out, like, last year or two years ago. Correct. Then the gen before that must have been about 2018, 2017, 2018. Which was basically a facelift. Yeah, and then before that must have been 2013, 2012. 2012. So, so yeah. I think it was the 2012 car. Right, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 you're probably right. Do you want me to tell you how much they were? No. <laughs> how much were they new? Because I remember buying one for myself. Go on. With a bit of discount, probably, but it was thirty-eight thousand pound. No. And I bet way. I bet they're still twenty grand now, are they? I think more. Let me no, just, they yeah, can't honestly, be. mate. So hold on, say Audi. Because I was looking, I, I couldn't believe it. And then, we, then I got into the RS fours. I was like, this is insane, mate. Even RS fives, which let's face it, not a lot of people have ever wanted. <laughs> no. Like they're done well. Okay, so what what year we're going for? We're going to say twenty twelve. We're going to say twenty twelve to twenty thirteen for the max year. Oh, that's the first gen. Yeah. So they're saying I think twenty fifteen must have been the second gen. Yeah, and then okay, and so then they facelifted them. Okay, so the lo let's see what the lowest is. Lowest RS three on the market with one hundred and twenty thousand miles is thirteen grand. Yeah, but is that a uh, is that a cat N or a cat? I don't know. It's a piece, it's a piece of crap. Right, but okay. here we go. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> Someone's car there. A, <laughs> a two owner 2012 car with 57,000 miles. Guess the price. How much? Guess the price. 57,000 miles, two owners, 2012. Come on, you're a motor dealer. 20 grand. Bang on the money, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, just, yeah, let me just see there, hold on a sec. If I just go up to 2015, because I think that is when the facelift came in. So, oh, yeah, so there we go. So then, yeah, 2015 was the newer the newer shape. Correct. And they're 30-odd. They're yeah, and then 17, they faced it and put the digital dash in that in them. Yes. They did, yeah. And I then mean, that's, that's... Yeah. Unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah. There you go, 56,000 mile, 2015 car, 36 grand. Man, isn't it? Or at least that's what the dealers that would have been a bit, That would have been a bit more. They would have been late 40s, sure. them cars. No. I'll tell you the other one as well. The um, the V8 RS6, the previous gen. Yeah, yeah, V8, yeah. A good one of them, still 40 grand. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, cool cars. Very, very cool cars. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're not looking backwards today. No. We're looking forwards. Right. Because it is a new year. And as I say, I love a new year. I love, love to get excited about so all the things an episode, ahead. So an episode about UFOs or something, isn't it? No, what? what yeah, are you we're, about? Oh, we, well, we're going. I mean, twenty thirty, we'll be flying everywhere. Oh. Won't be any cars. What are you talking about? I would love to look back, and I'm sure there's a list somewhere of all the predictions movies made about the year 2024 or circa this era. Yeah, because you know, guaranteed, there'll be a film from the 90s which would have said that by now we would have had robots and we'll be flying in cars. Sorry, flying cars. When was I Robot set? No idea, mate. I bet that was like, a stupid film. No, it's a great film. Is it? Mate, I like Will Smith. I, Robot. I like Will Smith. Yeah, I, Robot. When when was it set? What was that film that Will Smith done with a dog in the middle of nowhere on his own? I, Robot was set in 2035. So we're only 10 years away. So what happened in that then? They had, that was, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> it was robots, walking, talking, <laughs> right. acting robots. <laughs> but you asked about the one with the dog. Yeah. Only film I've ever cried at in the cinema. Very good film. I Am Legend. I Am Legend. Very, very good film. Let's not do any spoilers. No. Um, Did you like that film? As I say, it's yeah. the only film I've ever cried at in the cinema. Right. Oh, I won't tell you why, but it's, it's a tearjerker. It's a tearjerker. Anyway, so we're not looking for UFOs or flying cars, but we are looking at the cars that we're most excited about this year. The cars coming out this year, the cars that we might experience, the cars we might see, the cars we might get to test drive. Um, we might even test drive here on this very podcast. I can tell you a film that I cried about, oh, by the way, before we carry on. <laughs> it's a very, very Where's sad film. Going? Bear Where's in mind that I am a man of the people and oh, hard-nosed and the Green Mile, mate. Oh, yeah. Cried my eyes out. Oh, wow. That is a great film. Great it's film. A throwback, yeah. 
I don't tend to tear jerk. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we go. Well, this one. Clyde over Lassie. This one got me when it came out, but it's it's now. I actually don't think I could ever watch this film again. About Time? Never seen it. Oh, mate. Of, it's, it's a film for those that, oh, I don't know how to put this. Uh, it's all about a relationship with a father and a son. Fair. So maybe. Fair. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, there was another, what was that? What was that film that Bradley Cooper done and Lady Gaga? Oh, yeah. Um, Star is Born. Oh, mate. That, ne <laughs> that nearly <laughs> made, I had like frog in my throat. At the end when he, when, yeah, no spoilers. No spoilers. Like, that really <laughs> dumbed me. That was the most recent yeah. film that I watched that mm. dumbed me. Good but actors. I'm normally quite, very good actors, mm. yeah. I'm normally quite hard faced. I don't really cry about anything. But yeah, there are two films that really got me. What's your favourite car film? Oh, I mean, there's been loads down the years. Gone in 60 Seconds would have been in the day. Yeah. Good film. Uh, the, almost for me that's still because i think it's our generation right i think so speak yeah. to old people there was like bullet yeah but, yeah bullet i do no. like bullet but i'm not like it's the like no is that one the, the early fast and furious films yeah way too many now i stopped watching them at about three yeah tokyo drift was the best uh, yeah. oh, that's a controversial comment <laughs> really i actually love, like genuinely people are gonna go in on yeah you. yeah i'm about to get ruined but tokyo drift is my favorite fast and furious film. Uh, yeah i'm just trying to think of any other did you see um, The New Need for Speed? No, I haven't seen it, no. That was all right. Oh, I tell you what. What was that one where the Le Mans one, the recent Le Mans yeah, one? Yeah, with Matt Damon and... Very good. Yeah, that was good. That, that was a good was film. Good. Um, did you see Grand Prix, the original 60s F1 film? N no. That's good. That's a very good film. It's all, And they used, they filmed it within, within the Grand Prix. As in, like, actual real-time racing and stuff. I watched one on the plane, uh, Gran Turismo, where they had yeah, a... Yeah. I watched that on the yeah, plane. That okay. was, like, all right. All right, yeah. 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 Right, um, sorry. Hello. <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, <laughs> Do you want to start again? We were supposed to be talking about the cars we're most excited about seeing, driving, experiencing, learning about this year. Yeah. Because I think there are quite a few. I don't know if you, off the top of your head, if there's any cars that you're like, oh, I can't wait to find out about that. Or you, no, you're going to need help, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, well, thank God we're going to lean on our good old friends, uh, unofficial supporters of the podcast. <laughs> Let's hope one day they don't sue us. Auto Express, because they've compiled a list of really all the big cars coming out good. this year. Now, we'll, when we get to the end, there could be one more which I can slip in here, which somebody's told me, and I don't think they were supposed to tell me, so I'm not going to name check them. But I was, I was given the good little... Mm. Was you? Yeah, titbit. We're going to say a little titbit of information you're about a, tip off. a car coming this year that we're going to be very excited about. Okay, cool. Uh, the first on Auto Express's list, Alfa Romeo Milano. I couldn't care less about that. Could you care about that? It's a new little baby SUV. I think it's an Evoque rival or something like that from... It's an electric Alfa... Do we care? Small SUV. It goes up against the Volvo EX30. We don't care, do we? Mm. No. no, probably no. not. No. Um, so let's come on to this then. The Alpine A290. Now... I actually think I'm more excited about the new Renault 5. That's what it looked like. Well, this is the this is the Alpine version of the new Renault 5. Electric. Electric. Right. So the new Renault 5, huh? I think is fascinating because Renault have been very aggressive on where they hope to price it, which I believe is sub 30 grand. We'll check on that. I'm sure it'll be on this list. Mm -hmm. It's going to have around 250 mile range, I think. Retro styling, lots of advancements. So it's going to kind of be future proofed. It's going to be a slight new era of small city EV. Okay. Cool. Um, this is theoretically the hot version. I think at the moment it's still in like concept stage. Let's see what Auto Express have talked about. Um, dee -dee 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 -dee. It's going to feature a 215 horsepower electric motor that will drive the front wheels. Should cover 0 to 60 in less than six seconds. Man, not, not that fast. Um, it's lowered, stiffened suspension, agile handling. See, my thing is, right, as cool as this concept has looked, as I discovered with the electric Abarth, mm -hmm. electric hot hatches maybe don't make as much sense as I hope that they would because the minute you start driving an electric car hard well you just you burn out all the battery mm. I and mean, you, you you do do that in fuel as well by the way but yeah i get what you, you mean. can replenish it quicker Correct. i mean the, the point being is you know are evs really going to be enthusiast cars we're not i haven't seen it yet <laughs> no i, I 
Uh, no, I don't think really. I I think, and we've said that. I think yeah. we've said it before, mate. I've, I think get the, just get the Renault Five. Y- yeah, do you know what I mean? But, but there was an argument that I bring up about the normal Fiat Five Hundred E and the Abarth one, and you argued till the cow comes home, and now you're contradicting yourself. Well, no, because now I've experienced the Abarth, ah. and, and, and I do still think the Abarth stylistically is freaking amazing. I, I agree. like what it is. It's a bit like you know why get an uh, <laughs> GT Four when you can get a GTS, but maybe it's not quite as uh, appropriate an yeah, argument, yeah, but yeah. you know, there's more than just the performance as to why you buy the performance model. Does that make sense? In a combustion, or I a, think in an general, EV. in general, mm. Mm. I mean that is Larry that that Alpine whatever they call it. Looks they go amazing. Stupid name. The sort of. I mean, if that, had a, if that had a combustion A290 engine, yeah. Alpha if that had a combustion engine, I'd be jumping all over that car. It's quite big. Yeah. It's a bit like the um, Ionic Five. It's quite big. Oh, oh, really? Bigger than you think. Oh, it's not. It's not big, big, but it, it is quite big. But the Ionic yeah. Five's huge. It looks cool. Yeah, it does look cool. But I'm just a bit like, do you need all the lowered and stiffened suspension and blah 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 and likely lower range? When I think the Renault Five looks amazing. Nike bringing out a car now. Okay, well let's see. Yep. Keep an eye on that. <laughs> Now, this bad boy I am very excited about. I'm actually excited about Aston Martin's year ahead in general. So the Valhalla, we're expecting to see production Valhalla this year. Do you remember, when was it, Geneva, I'm going to say like 2010, when Aston Martin had Valkyrie, Valhalla and Vanquish as the three mid-engine supercars? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, it, is it Dr. Palmer? It was Andy Palmer's final uh, year, I think. He was there doing the speeches all yeah, the while. Yeah, or it was yeah. Towards the end of his, his the, before the whole stroll takeover. And they had yeah. the three cars all in concept stage. And yeah. it's like, this is the new vision for Aston Martin. Mm-hmm. So we've had Valkyrie for a while now, but Valhalla is finally coming to fruition. Which is the baby one. Which is the baby one. So yeah. it's, I mean, we say baby one, it's still going to be 700 or grand, hypercar level. I think it's now got the, the Merc AMG engine. So it's the 4-litre V8, I'm pretty sure, with hybrid tech. Fun. So two electric motors, I believe. Um, so it's the AMG black engine with the with hybrid tech. Here we go. 4-litre um, twin-turbo V8, flat plane crank. Yes, it is. Uh, Res up to 7,200 RPM yep. with a pair of electric motors. Yeah. One on the front and one on the rear. Claiming around 1,000 horsepower and 1,000 newton meters. Um, and they're making just 999. Is it 999 or 900? Yeah, 999 That'd units. Be fast, that car. And around 1,500 kilos. So yeah. it's not going to have the all-singing Valkyrie Formula 1 sounding engine, but, I mean, that sounds like a pretty good combination there, doesn't it? Probably SF90 speed kind, yeah, of, kind it, of thing. I think that's probably where it's going to be rivaling, mm. isn't it? It's, it's an SF90 rival, but a little bit more up-to-date with a bit of a bigger price tag. A bit uh, double. A double, yeah. <laughs> Good point. Sorry. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm excited by it. I think I think it's cool. Let's hope let's hope they deliver on it because yeah. Um, I think I think it's exciting. And well, okay. So they don't mention it here on Auto Express. The other thing we've got to look out for is the new Vantage. There's a new Vantage coming this year from Aston Martin. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, they said that to me at the DB12 launch. They said next year we've got new Vantage. So I don't know when or where or what we're going to see, and whether it's going to be a rolling car or whatever. But I'm pretty sure we're expecting new Vantage this year. Well, we probably know what that's going to be or look like, right? It'll, it'll inside look like a DB12 and outside it'll have a V8 Merc engine in it and look a bit prettier. Someone, I don't think Aston Martin, I thought they were putting their own engine in the new Vantage. That's brave. I'm sure there was some chat about Aston were developing their own new really? Aston. I'm sure that was going on. Um, for, the, for the little car? For the V8? I thought, I thought so, but maybe I'm making that up. Mm, maybe for the V12. But maybe for the V12. Oh, not for the V8. No, you would assume that... Makes sense I don't know to put that. I thought that. Oh, no. I'm, okay, well, I think I maybe that was a dream. <laughs> 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 uh, maybe I got drunk. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't message me and say you want a new Vantage. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> you will, yeah. I will. <laughs> I've always loved the Vantage. Yeah. I, w- I will want that Good car. Good value. They out. are, by the way. The... Current shape, the V8 Vantage. Yeah, how much are they going oh, for? I bet you get. I bet you get like a 2019 car. I bet the 70 grand now. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's a used car. Good but car. Everyone, that. everyone said they got bored of them. Well, e- yeah. Everyone I know was like six months down the line. I was like, because it works. Feels like a C63. Well, yeah, but you, it's a bit of a trade-off, isn't it? Do you want a car that works or do you want a car that breaks? Mm. It's weird because pe- cars that break that people have to nurture, they love them more. Yeah. Than cars that that work. Personality, mate. Yeah, I guess. 
it's but the, I'm the, the other way because I've home. had millions of them. That's the problem. You I will think, flip round at some point, ladies and gents. You'll get fed up with it laying underneath them every weekend trying to fix the bloody things. It depends how you use it. If it, it I do not want to daily um, <laughs> 1970s Alfa Romeo. Do no. I want now for 1970 <laughs> Yes, for the odd occasion. I do not want to daily it. So no. I want the daily to be a Mazda. You know, like, I, I just want comfortable, reliable. But the the toy, the Vantage, yeah. yeah. Some people, that new car, people daily them. It's just a good car, apart from it not having touchscreen and having that stupid old Merc tech in it. I think they're, I mean, all, they're, all, getting new te- they're all getting the DB12 tech, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, perfect. The DBX is finally getting it. You know, it's all, yeah. they're all going to get new yeah, tech. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, let's wait and see. Um, Audi A6 e-tron, so the electric A6 coming. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <sighs> Good. Based on my i5 experience, oh. not like, would I care about a petrol A6? Probably not. So it's no. probably unfair of me to judge this. So but do you care about an electric one? No. Right. No. Should we move on? Let's move on. Okay. Uh, now, this is a car that I am intrigued by. The new M5 Touring. Oh, yeah, I knew about this one, yeah. We all knew about this one. Yeah, so yeah. we're expecting to find out and see more of this. Now, I'm still confused. Let's see what Auto Express is saying here. The last M5 Touring, the E60... Oh, no, here we go. That's right, 2024, we'll see the return of it. Because what I'm trying to work out, is this going to be a new M5 with a Touring variant... Or a touring variant of the old M5. No, no, it's a new car. So this is the new M5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be a hybrid and everything. It's a new car. Okay, all new car. Yeah, but launched as a touring. Well, or uh, they'll just be a touring variant. No, no, no. They'll do both, won't they? They'll, they'll do, do both, of course. But well, obviously, people are going to be more excited about the touring. But I think so. Yeah, I think they'll just you know available in saloon as well. But this is the one that we caught wind of last year being priced at over 150 grand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Insanity. Good luck. And it's the, here they're saying it's the plug-in hybrid setup in the XM Super SUV thing, which everyone's been horrible about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, could this end up being a bit of a fail? Well, we'll see by how much money they give off, because mm. they will be. No, but as a thing in general, because we are both such huge fans, and talk about bargains, of the previous shape M5 and the M5 competition, those cars are looking like great value at the moment. Yeah, but they normally, you know, we spoke about this before as well, they do after three years old. Mm. You know, they. but unfortunately, like everything else, things age so quickly. I remember the previous shape before that. Um, oh, I don't, <sighs> was it not the E39, was it? No. No, that was like no. 1997. Yeah. But anyway, it was the, it was the, it was the first V8 turbo after the V10. So 2012, 2013 car. That was an unbelievable bit of kit. Mm-hmm. They, I bet they're 20 grand now, 25 grand. It's incredible, but you wouldn't want to run one. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, let's wait and see on this thing. But I think there's going to be a bit like, well, let, I'm not going to say too much more. I'm excited to see how it looks, the shape of it. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge based on the i5 size. It's going to be a big old car. And I don't know. I'm not sitting here being like, this is a car I'm going to put a deposit on. Whereas we both know M3 Touring, if I had lots of money, I'd be walking into a showroom and buying today. Well, that's what everyone else said, and there's millions of them online. Meanwhile, X2. I'm looking for, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, man. Uh, no, is it that one that I... You like the X1 M35. That's it. That's what you like. But there's an X2 M35 as well. Yeah. I think the X2s are cool. Like, they're baby X4s. They're these little sort of boxed up, they all come with M Sport badging and and styling, and they're just kind of cool. I think I, this is I think it's a great little car. M light, they are. Aren't they're they? proper little M lights. Yeah. I think I think they're really cool. There's an, there is an electric version, but I think the X2 M35 i a vibe. Yeah. That is a proper vibe. That little car. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see about that. Um, moving on, uh, just gonna skip past a few things that we know nothing about. Why are you skipping by all the little? Uh, well, do you know anything about these city ones? Do you know there anything was about one there? That's a Citroen oh. EC3. Do you, know, do you know anything about that? But I think it'll be good for the people, mate. That's so here lo- we go. Yeah, Citroen EC3 is an all-electric super mini. It'll start from under twenty-three grand. Fantastic, brilliant. Whilst um, little city the size car. of the battery is for around one hundred and twenty miles. Oh. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, let's go past that. Yeah. <laughs> See? I'm just going past I'm so things sorry. That, I'm just going past yeah. stuff that I don't think we know much about and we haven't got much to talk about. There's a big mm. old Cupra there. I don't know anything about that, oh, right. so I'm not excited about it. There's a 
new Dacia Duster. Do you want to talk about that, mate? Well, I quite like them. Do you? Uh, well, they've done the old Kia job, haven't they? Where they come into the market really, really cheap for a lot of years. They're not cheap anymore. They're quite expensive now. So how much is a date shirt? It's going to be prices start well under 20 grand for this. Yeah, but then, 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 then that, they're not worth that's literally grand, just a steering wheel. And then you then you start buying packs and loading them up. Oh, and then, fine. Yeah. So they're quite clever with how they package them up. So the new one now, the new really cheap combustion car is the MG now. Yeah, MG yeah, fly. They, are they all electric? No. All the MGs are electric, aren't they? They do, a, they do, the, the, they do the, the boxy little SUV. It's a petrol one, no? Oh, okay, fine. But they do a lot of electrics that I'm are very sure. cheap too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MG4 and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bit of a weird shape. Your neighbour's got one. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. They're very cheap. Um... Anyway, well, there's some, there are lots of new da Datchers coming, so... Which is all Renault, if you're interested. It's old Renault, by the way, but yeah. Oh, what's that? There's a new electric Ford Capri, and Ford are doing what they did with the Mustang. Breaks my heart. Yeah. I still don't think the Mustang Mach-E should be called a Mustang. No, it's... Just call it the Mach-E. That's worse. That is worse. So, so just so that you know, this is um, the new Capri. It's a crossover. It's a sort of boxy-looking... I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's not, out of order. Yeah. It, it's a, yeah, it's a cougar, basically. It's a big cougar. But yeah, it's, just call it something else. Like, I know yep. they're trying to, like, bring back some kind of, I don't know what. Well, make uh, it look pull like on a, the heart a strings. Then. Yeah, like Renault have done with the Renault 5. Correct. That's amazing. But, yeah, if they called the Mustang Mach-E just a Mach-E, people would probably have gone to it quicker. But the whole Mustang, it makes no sense. You know I don't like old cars, don't you? Yeah. I would have a Capri. I uh, hope you'd have an original Capri. Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't drive it because they're a death trap. They sure. don't go in a straight line and sure. they literally go around trees. But Go around trees or into trees? Both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but um, that was like a bit of a, not a poster car, but it was something when I was a kid mm -hmm. um, that you identified as the, like the price range sports car. Fair. So that was kind of the attainable sports car? Like, yeah. Would it be the equivalent to a Toyota GR86 or something like that? Yeah, but with, okay. but with imagine that with a big three-litre engine yeah. in it. Cooler. With no brakes. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> no traction control. And they were all on TV, weren't they? Like every UK TV, like crime series yeah, and detective, yeah, they yeah. all had Capris, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're a mega, mega thing. I yeah. saw a couple of really... Famous Capris. Oh, what was the TV show? Now everyone's going to absolutely kill me. Like a 70s or 80s. Minder? No. No. They had two, like one brown Capri. Sweeney? No. no. Come on, mate. I can't help you I'm much more. Than no, this, no, I'm going to have to bring it up. Come on. I'm, I'm trying here. Yeah. TV show with. And that would have suited you, mate, because back in the day. Capris. Back in the day, mate, by the way, they're all brown. The professionals. Oh, the professionals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw the actual Capris from the professionals. They were up for sale at the like the motor hub, the classic motor hub, something like that. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, look, cool, an old Capri. And then I moved on, and the guy came over and was like, do you know what this is? I was yeah. like, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was not alive, so I'm sorry. Um, but I, I get that. They're cool looking things. They're yeah, very yeah. cool looking things. So, yeah, we're going to give a big thumbs down to this <laughs> Ford Capri EV piece of poo yep. um, and move on again past a few things that I don't know. Oh, yeah, the new Mustang, because there is the new Mustang, the dark, the dark Horse, which I saw at Le Mans last year, which has got that um, pump pumping. Uh, They've got an engine in it. Yeah, 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 proper. Oh, it's a proper V8 Mustang. They're not messing around with the actual Mustang. Okay, fine, good. What's his name? Vaughan Getton Jr. has helped develop their new drift system. So remember in the Focus RS, what was it called in that? Drift mode? or Drift, uh, no. drift mode, yeah. Was it called drift yeah, mode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now activated through literally like a, almost like a fly-off handbrake. It's what, insane. Hydraulic? Yeah, but it's not. But it, oh, it, crash. It, yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it I was like, how has that gone through like insurance regulations. or regulations yeah. or... It's unbelievable, and I think it looks the bomb. I think they've got the styling oh, bang one. on. We saw this at the LA Auto Show, don't you remember? We did, yeah. I think they're really good looking. I love the Mustang, and you see them in the UK now a lot more, and they're just cool things. You know, that in terms of getting into a car that says a lot about you, gives you a lot of experience, maybe not a lot of dynamic performance, but at least a lot of sound. A lot of, like, that's a great thing for somebody. Mm. At 35-ish grand? Has the V8 been in the UK? You, or was well, that the EcoBoost? A bit, bit more, yeah. The okay. v, but if you're going new prices, they're probably 
40, 45, 50 ish. Okay. For but, a newish car. But still, I think it's always been a good alternative for the man on the street to get into something which, you know, as I say, people go, oh, look, that's a cool car. Well, when you look at the German equivalents, nearly half the money. For sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. And I'm, I'm excited for that dark horse. I think Schmee's getting one. I, I, I'm going to reach out to some Ford representatives and see if we can have a go in that. I think, okay. I think that'd be a really cool car. Really cool car. Now, so how could Ford get so much of this wrong and then some of it right? Mm. So we're moving on to the Puma EV. Mm -hmm. Now that looks like a Puma, right? Y well, yeah. That is an electric Ford Puma. Correct. So why do they do that Capri piece of crap? Well, well I don't, I'm, I don't know, mate. We I don't know. Off. Yeah, well, I mean, we've gone in on it. We've gone in on it. Yeah, here we go. The Puma EV won't be a bespoke electric car like the Capri. There we go. That's why. So that's why it's not got its whole new styling because it will still have ice engines right and hybrids but it just looks like a oh, God. puma yeah mate yeah. Oh, fuming <laughs> um ah okay let's get into this a little bit now oh. hyundai hyundai god knows how you pronounce it they keep telling us different things ionic 5n yeah now this obviously launched at goodwood last year i actually chatted to one of the designers like coincidentally on the mm -hmm. stand the Pirelli stand were right next door and I was walking over taking some photos of the Psyonic 5N the guy came out and said oh hey Sam like I listen to the podcast I, I watch the show I actually am a designer I was like oh cool <laughs> lovely um, Hyundai we better say then well I don't know but uh, you were quick to slag this thing off Paul and I got really excited by this thing Paul more so than any of us but you were just a bit like meh well because it's massive the, so is, is it a hot I mean what is it mate the Ionic Ionic 5 is a very big vehicle. Huge. Huge. It's, it's like an SUV. Yeah. It's boxed <laughs> up like a hatchback, but it is like an SUV. But this is the N variant. Uh. We know that pretty much all N product Hyundai's cars have surprised us, have been very good. Very good. i30N, Kona N, i20N. We're like, win, 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 win. All of them brilliant. So why won't this be brilliant? Because you also have said to me before... People in the know say that Ionic 5 is really the EV to get. For an EV, yeah. But when you start throwing a load of power at it, and it's 4 million tonne, it sort of changes things a little bit for me. So uh, that's why I think it's stupid. And I did say about 10 minutes ago, <laughs> why do we have performance EVs? Is there any need? But for some reason, this excites me, because I feel like, I think, I still don't know how to say Hyundai. Yeah. <laughs> Hyundai. Hyundai! Hyundai! Um, sorry, I, I definitely inferred a little bit of an accent there, which I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but um, Yeah. Uh, I feel like they've been getting the EV thing right, and I think they've been getting the N thing right. So I'm a bit like, maybe this will be great. And it look, a lot of the launch stuff, the videos, what they did at Goodwood, I was like, that's a kind of cool looking thing. And I don't know... I don't know. I just I'm kind of intrigued we, we, by it. But, but you, you said the same about the Abarth, and now you're not really that keen on it. It's the same thing. And you love Abarth, the combustion ones. I do. Yeah. I did, but... The, uh, I'm, mate, mate, I'm with you. I know. I do you want to cuddle? No. No? No, no. no. Oh, all right. <laughs> I haven't lost my identity that much. <laughs> I'm just... I am intrigued by this thing. Right. I understand that probably I'm going to get in it and go... Is it really necessary? No. Eh, just get an Ionic 5. But I still want to have some hope for the future, mate. I want to have cars to be excited about. I don't want to go through this whole list and get to the end and be like, oh, well, all the cars are a bit crap. Let's move <laughs> on. Because nice... we haven't been that excited about much yet, <laughs> no. apart from the Valhalla. But so... are we, though, in general, ever really that excited about I stuff? Am. <laughs> are you? Speak for yourself, yeah. <laughs> until I, okay. I genuinely get... I mean, hey, uh, I'm sticking with my guts. All right, mate. I'm excited by this. Okay. I'm Ionic not. 5N. Watch this space, people. Right. Look at this. Look, the N engineers have haven't focused all their time on winning drag strip bragging rights to help tackle some corners. <laughs> they've given the clever ELSD. That's not a drug. That's a limited slip diff, but an electric version on the rear motor. Torque vectoring that features eleven different settings. There's also a drift optimizer that stimulates an internal combustion engine's clutch kick. What the hell? Mm. It features a novel thing called NE shift. Essentially, the system adjusts the car's torque output to deliver a small jolt and give the impression of gear shifts. Right. This is cool, mate. This is fun, cool stuff. Okay. Prices start from around 65 grand. What? <laughs> Are you joking? That's what they say. Yeah. Be now, you could buy an X3M for that money. <laughs> I thought I'd just power past that last <laughs> bit. Uh, 
Um, anyway, moving on. So, uh, the Lotus, Emea? I saw, em- I, I, I saw the SUV one. The Did weekend. you? Yeah, it's one, yeah. the, it's one at my gym this morning. Yeah. What I is that thing? The, I went to the gym. The Electra. Yeah. Oh, Quite nice. It's the outside. Like, oh, it's like a little electric Eurus. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is the saloon version, which I think is even better looking. No and I love that. the Electra. Uh, no one will buy that. No one will buy this? No. Really? No. No one will buy that. What's a good stupid car? A complete waste of time. Why? Because you just buy the SUV version. It's like it's like Porsche make it. Why do they make the Panamera anymore? I mean, no one buys it. They just buy the Cayenne. Who buys a Panamera? For in the general? first time ever, I'm going to say I think you're right. Yeah, I actually think you're right. We live in a world where that car's not relevant anymore. Yeah, why have they done that? Yeah. Because here it says, oh, going up against the Tesla Model S and the Taycan. But if you've got the Electra, what's the point in the EMEA? EMEA? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. yeah. Well done, Tony. Yeah. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have <laughs> thought that. Because I was about to get very excited saying it's beautiful and the Electra was really good. Yeah. But unfortunately, we live in a world where everyone buys SUVs. Yeah. And we, and we forget that sometimes, by the way. It's still, it's probably growing now, but it's plus 50%. Of cars sold in this country, in this country, are SUVs plus fifty percent, so and, more than half. And I know lots of us, especially us enthusiasts, aren't keen on that, and we're like, you know, don't buy SUVs, go and get a saloon or a wagon. But it's we're, so, well, we're, we're a minority, in. and so yeah, you're and, right. And the manufacturers want us to buy SUVs because that's where their margin is. And if you look, at, they put here the Taycan. Mercedes EQS and then the Tesla Model S. But Tesla have got the Model X and the Model Y, I think, is a bit of a crossover, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Porsche are about to come out with the Macan, which is hopefully going to be on this list. If not, we're going to talk about it. And Mercedes have got a thousand electric SUV products. And so have Audi. But, yeah. but Mercedes more so. So I guess the EMEA has, EMEA has better aero, so then maybe can do a better range? Good. I guess. I mean... Okay. Oh, yes, that's better. Here we go. <laughs> Finally, a car Tony can talk about. <laughs> yeah. Not try and skip past. The new Mercedes-AMG GT. Uh-huh. Now, I think, tell me what you saw, initial reviews of this car were good. I, I would assume they will be. Because uh, a few people got their hands on it towards the end of last year. I think there were some press drives and some early loans. And whilst, in, you know, when the car launched, people were like, what, it's gone four-wheel drive and it's so heavy and the whole was so bad. And then people drove it and went, oh, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looks great. Yeah. I know they've elongated it stuff, but every time I see a photo, I'm like, yep, looks the bomb. Mm. I am really keen to have a go on one of these. The problem with that car. Oh, no. The problem is, uh, is weight will be a problem and it's more than the 911. Mm, it's an expensive it, car. Huh? Which it rivals. Yeah, it's it's going after 911 Turbo, isn't it? It's a problem. Well, like any of these brands, when they try and steal customers away from the 911, you've got a lot to go up against, but it's a Mercedes. If you want an alternative. You want an alternative. Yeah. So this is a Turbo or Turbo S rival. This is not a 911 Carrera S rival. And this is supposed to be seen as a premium luxury product, is a Merc. Mm. And it's I'd, very lovely inside, very fancy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would love to do a big journey one of these. I, I, I hope to reach out to Mercedes and do a, you know, I want to do a 2,000 mile journey in this thing or something, right. you know, a proper, because I think that's where it will come into its own. It's less about the squirty mountain pass the previous generation was. Oh, I think that will do that for about 15 minutes and then it'll fall off a cliff. No, it will fall off a cliff if you're behind the wheel. I think of a, I don't think you're going to wake up on a Sunday morning and go out for a hoon in this car. No. But I think it's a car to drive, a bit like with my old F-Type R, on an everyday occasion. And if you end up on a good road, I think it will still be fantastic at fast pace. Not at extreme speed. Let's do Pike's Peak and set an all-new record. Let's not go around Spa and set the timing charts alight. But as a, I'm going to drive briskly along this road, I think that will be fantastic. Turbo S does both, though. That's the problem. Uh, Turbo S does it all for sure, but Turbo mm. S is compromised in some areas. It is yeah. cramped. It is it's more, very cramped. Yeah, it is more focused on dynamics than luxury and cruisability. This will have cylinder shut off. This will be very quiet, very elegant. It will have one. Well, you can get that Burmeister sound system is pretty good in the Turbo <laughs> S. But you know, this will have an air of something else. I would agree that big Mercs in general 
waft down the road nicer than the Porsche, mm, for mm-hmm, sure. Mm-hmm. As in, in a straight line, they do go down the road. We just t- I've just took a, a 2016 S500 Coupe in Park Exchange. Oh, oh my God. Which, which I'm, I'm going to resell. I don't normally sell 2016 cars, but I'm going to resell it because I, I, we, I delivered the new car yesterday and picked it up. I drove it back from Northamptonshire. Yeah. And I could not believe, I had to refresh myself, how well it drove, mate. Has, has it got CarPlay, that car? Um, you can get it fitted if it's not. How much do you sell that car? It's like 35 grand. Yeah, oh my God. I, can I come look at that car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, like... Honestly, it's mate... It's a Bentley Continental, isn't it? It is. It's mm. exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. But it works. Because mm-hmm. if you buy a 2015 or 2016 Bentley Continental... One, they're 50 or 60 grand. If not more. If not I've looked, more. Yeah. This Mercedes will drive down the road nicer wow. than the Bentley. It is incredible. And I remember, I used to sell them when they were near like 80, 90 sure. grand. They're 35 it's grand now. Unbelievable. It's done 30,000 miles. It's had eight Mercedes service history. Eight services at Merck. What's back? It's an S500 premium. Black, like what black, black, black with black. It's got, it's got... Nice wheels? Yeah, the multi-spec ones. Oh, man, I'm going to come and have a look at that. Yep. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to have a look at that. I might just have to give you a deposit and you might have to sit on it for, until June. No. <laughs> no, I'll be all right then. You don't need the money, do you? Yeah. No, I don't need the money. No, yeah. I'm all right. I just lost the load of money. I don't need it. No, it's fine. Awesome. No problem. Well, I'm genuinely going to come and look at that. Are you really? Because I've been looking at them. I mean, me and Paul have been showing them on auto trailer non-stop. They're, and there's never like nice ones with low mileage that just don't come up. And it's, they've got, it's got a back bench, right? They're not seats, but it's got a back bench. But there's plenty of room in the I back. Could, I could ram a, a baby seat back there, couldn't oh, I? Oh, mate, comfortably. Because this is genuinely, because oh, I can't believe I'm what is this. By the way, car buying is an addiction. I've realised this. Yes, yeah, It lovely. is a drug, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you start losing huge amounts of money, then you go, oh, that's enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm going to keep mentioning it basically now until June, when the SVR and the i5 go. I've been trying to work out what I'm going to do. Mm. And I've genuinely been thinking, well, I, you know, what's my... Anyway. I'll be honest, though, with an S500. It's incredible in every single way you are going to get a bill at some point yeah probably no you will probably but 35 grand mate. no mate it's I, I i really when i was driving it back if you shut your eyes you could literally still be in a hundred grand car yeah unreal yeah um oh this is funny so <laughs> tony is pointing at a picture of the electric mercedes g-class g-wagon goes round and round so this one can do a tank turn. Yeah, it can yeah. turn 360 degrees on the spot, which I think a lot of people were like, what, like, what a gimmick. That's why but, I buy it. But actually, it's genius for inner city manoeuvrability. Yeah. And I think they're claiming as well for like, you know, off-roading or whatever, but it is a bit of a gimmick. All the black cab drivers be buying them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not when you come a London taxi. Yeah. I'm all for this. <laughs> Me too. I'm all for this. If there's ever going to be a cool electric... I mean, that that is a perfect electric car. Yeah. A bit like an electric Range Rover. Because all anyone ever does is waft around the city in a jeep wagon. They don't go anywhere else. No. So how many miles is it in there? Um, let's see. If that it's still in concept form, I think. Um, EQG. Uh, is it talking about mileage? No, they haven't got that far yet. No. Yeah, I feel like Schmied has had a go in one of these in in America. But Did he? Anyway, um, yeah, no, I'm, su- I'm super intrigued by this. I think, yeah. it's been, I think it's been really, really cool. So let's hope we find out more details about that. But yeah, electric G-Class on the way. Nice that they've kept the ident. I mean, straight away. It's, it's a G-Wagon. It's a G-Wagon. Yeah, not Haven't like tried the Capri. To- yeah, yeah. Sorry, Ford. Yep. We're, we're coming for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yes. The MG Cyberster. Cyberster. Why didn't they call it the Cyberstar? Well, pretty, what pretty looking car, isn't it? Electric roadster, mate. Looks all right, mate. But they're saying this is going to be like 300 mile range. Lovely. How much is it? Uh, cheap, like all these MGs. Uh, pricing hasn't been confirmed yet, but they're saying it's going to be around the 50 grand mark. 3.2 to 60? Yeah. I mean, this is going to pro- 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 proper first thing. They've done a 500 horsepower one, 700 newton meters of torque. Um, range figures have yet to be confirmed, but be around the 300 mile mark. It's got a massive battery. Right. I mean, 50 grand is... is It's a lot, mate. It is a lot. Yeah. I actually thought it was cheaper than that. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. until we get that electric Boxster, this intrigues me a lot. Yeah. Really, really cool, that thing. Pretty so, car. Yeah, very pretty car. And mm. MG are just making moves. Or at least the Chinese are. Um, but under the, br- the umbrella of MG. <laughs> hiding <laughs> under a cloak of invisibility. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're here to infiltrate. There'll be a factory in Birmingham before we know it. Literally. Um, there's a few new minis. The new electric Cooper, That's which I... hideous, that car. Do you think? But, mate, it looks horrible. Do you remember on... Top Gear, China done a rip-off version of the of the Mini. Mm, that's what you think it looks that, like. That's the way it look, I mean, it's like someone's literally just... It's not really a Mini. Someone's just drawn something that looks like a Mini. I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> of course I you quite do. like it, and it's got some sort of slightly gimmicky fun touches, which all of these EVs are starting to have. They've got to. I, yeah, I saw it at the BMW showcase last year. I, yeah, I think it's cool. Okay. I think it's cool. I, I like that. Um... Uh, it's again, it's a small city car, so 190 mile range. Mm. Oh. Yeah. And the big countryman version as well. Um, Persia, I've got a few new bits. I'm skipping quite fast here because there's just, there are so many cars coming out. So Pol many. Polestar making some good moves. That's new All Polestar electric Ford. Ones. Yeah, so many new electric so cars. So many oh. electric ones. Here we go. So they the are. McCann EV, the Porsche McCann EV. So mm. we believe the long delayed McCann EV. Yeah. We think that this car was supposed to be unveiled, well, maybe even 12 months ago. <laughs> at um, least. At least. And yeah, Porsche yeah. have held it back for a number of reasons dwindling Taycan sales, uh, electric sort of uh, what's called pushback on, yeah, yeah. on some EV adoption, and wanting to. Well, improve the platform because I think initially it was going to have very similar sort of performance to Taycan. And obviously, the market has moved forward so much since Taycan came out. I think Porsche were like, we need to improve this. This is all hearsay, by the way. Well, originally, um, this was meant to do 300 mile range, this car. Yeah, yeah, I think they weren't. We've got to work on that. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean they can get it to do 300. I'm excited by it, though. I think, I think, heck, you know, they did smash the Taycan. It's just that the, the tech is a little bit dated at this point, but they did, it's still one of the best looking driving EVs out there. Um, the early cars didn't work great, but I think they've kind of ironed that out. Um, they've depreciated like a lead balloon, but, you know, what EV hasn't? I still think they're an attractive thing. And so the Macan, one of the most popular cars in our market, I think I think it makes sense. I completely disagree with really? your Taycan theory. I think it's a terrible... As in, it's a proper car to drive. It's a Porsche for an electric car. I still think it is up there with the best driving EVs. But as a car, mate, it's like, it, they break all the while. I think the early ones did. I, I don't think the newer cars do. <laughs> well, I mean, I've heard so many stories of them breaking, but in general, as in right the way through mm. up G until recently. Glitches and things, like, like what kind of batteries, breaking? Batteries. I mean, they all suffered, the early cars all suffered from that heating issue, the heating matrix, they all packed up. But more recently, big battery issues. Mm. Um, and having to replace batteries under warranty and mm, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is frightening. Yeah, because yeah. I think I think replacement batteries are twenty or thirty grand. Thirty grand. Thirty mm. grand. Yeah, yes. which obviously under warranty is fine. But as we're looking towards the future and buying used cars, because used Taycans are insanely attractive at this point. Fifty odd grand for mm. a used Taycan. Yeah. Um, that, that starts you start to go. Well, that looks great. But yeah. I mean, but that, then again, warranty is what seven year warranty? Five I think year it's warranty? Ten on the battery. Ten. Yeah. Well, there you go. So we're a while away from having to stomach a 30 grand cost but, um but but if you think say say they're three or four year old now they've got 10 year warranties and the batteries have been all right so in six years time they're going to be 25 30 grand you need a battery mm. we right throw the car away yeah a absolutely That's the problem. but what how much for example would a um a nine nine seven gts engine b well, you, you don't buy a new one, you recon it. Okay, fine. But you can, ha sometimes you might have to buy new engines. No, but like so a Porsche combustion <clears throat> engine can't be that cheap. Not to buy new, they're a fortune. Yeah. But people, this is what I mean. So you have these companies out there where um, we used to get them all the, all the while on 997.1s. They'd be bore squad. Of course. Even ones that are like four and five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd send them away. you just yeah. take the engine out, you'd send them away, you'd be... Five grand, probably. Yeah, five grand-ish. Rescore the boring, put it back in. Still not cheap. It's still not cheap. No, but it doesn't write the car off because the car would still be 30 grand-ish, for instance. Sure. So it's five... I mean, literally... Yeah. You, you throw the car away. It's 30 grand. It is a question mark for the future, for sure, when these batteries start to come out of warranty, but... If we're talking 10 years away, it's sort of hard to think that there won't be some way that they'll figure that out. Well, I, I hope they mean? do. 
Yeah, I, I think they'll have to because yeah. otherwise we're all screwed, and that used EV market will even be even more dead. And this is own. the this is the unknown bit we don't quite know yet. No, it's all very new to us. Uh, and by the way, that McCann, that'll be uh, I bet that'll be touching nearly a hundred grand that car easily. Yeah, easily. But I mean. That's a completely different customer to the customer that buys it now. Yeah. The, the McCann customer now, you don't buy that car. Yeah, fair. It's, it's different price point. At which point, that would be interesting for Porsche, because that McCann has been... the best-selling car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, if they suddenly price themselves away, or at least move themselves away, but, but they have to. Do you know what I mean? They, they do have to. In the, in the way the world's going for now. Yeah. Um, we've also got the new Panamera. Let's see mm. how long that sticks around. We talked about that a bit last year. Uh, electric Range Rover car you've been very excited about for a while. Yeah, it does uh, the range. It's like literally per same as the G Wagon. It's perfect. Yeah, it'll be perfect. They're saying it's going to have uh, 800 volt architecture like the Taycan. So expect 10 to 80 percent charge. Shouldn't take more than half an hour. Um, range should be able to uh, rival iX EQS. It'll be a 250 mile range, something mm. like that. <laughs> There's that Renault 5. So we've come on to the Renault 5 that I was talking about, which I just think is just so damn cool. We already yeah. talked about it quite a bit at the beginning. But yeah. Um, yeah, lots of interesting tech on that. And I think it will be, um, yeah, really, really cool. So I can't yeah. wait to find out that. And they're going to price it, yeah, around 30 grand. Yep. Um, we're going to come past a couple of these because... All electric. All I, these yeah. brands, mate. It's the way, but we've been hearing it yeah. for ages, mate. It's all we've been hearing is everyone's going electric. There's the new Land Cruiser, yeah. which we have to give a shout out. Our mate Alex Stead is going to be in the advert for this. Is he? Yeah. So so literally he's out filming at the moment for like the big commercial ad along a big YouTube, alongside a big YouTuber called Ava Zubek. Um, Alex is, is a starring role in that. Wow. So amazing photographer, Alex. If you don't follow him on Instagram, go check him out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this. Mm -hmm. It looks very cool. Love the look of the new Prius. Big fan of the new Prius, just visually. Mm -hmm. Big step forward. And then finally, we come on to Volvo EX30. Oh. Th this is the price range electric. Well, oh. I got very intrigued by this when it first came out because all that chat was, yeah, affordable, electric, Volvo, all this learning, you know, Geely with Lotus. This is the ultimate one. It's not that cheap. And it's not quite out yet, is it? No. So it's sort of, imminent right uh, we are expecting it this year yeah the base base car is going to be around 31 grand right but like so many things the minute you start putting stuff on it that flies up and that also the 31 grand is like a little city car that's going to be a at best 214 mile range which real world is 150 mm. so the minute you start getting the one that you want you're pushing up towards 50 grand will be 50 grand yeah. um and so I, I got all excited and all intrigued and they had all these materials and all this information and then I was a bit like, well, hold on a sec. I don't think any of this is that revolutionary. No. We seem to be in the same bucket once again. So, yeah, Volvo let me down a bit there and I, I lean back towards Polestar at this kind of, this kind of point. I mean, it's a good looking thing, but... You know, the, you know the biggest thing that's hit me about this whole list and we've been sitting here for nearly an hour mm -hmm. talking about this list, that most of the list of been electric and it's mm -hmm. really really clear that the manufacturers are more than ever concentrating on this mm -hmm. no one buys them mate well well okay no they don't mate they literally don't mm. no one buys electric car who are they going to sell these cars to mm. who's buying them well supposedly <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people because no because the the papers will tell you the stats will tell you that more EVs are, have been bought and registered in the last few years than ever before. The yep. numbers are increasing. <laughs> We're going EVs. It's registrations. I mean, they're sold. Mm. It's registrations. That's that, And it's always at the end of the year mm. because that's when the manufacturers are targeted for their CO2 emission outputs. Mm. And that, that's the problem. We always get these stats. More EVs have been sold in December than ever before. It's a load of old tosh. No one is buying them. It's just mm. as plain and simple as that. I oh, see what they get on the road, though. Yeah, well. And maybe people will buy these ones. Maybe that's the whole point. Well, these are the new, fun, cool ones. And I'll tell you another thing that's n not really changing over the last few years that really needs to change is that the range. Well, I think that's the only thing which, which I would I definitely agree with you on is that we've just been through that list, as you say, Lots of new electrics, little electrics, city electrics. We didn't touch on a lot of the sort of, as you say, more price of the, the Datsias and the yeah. Renaults and the various other things in there that, that 
are more affordable as well. But none of them are, none of that list is revolutionary. No, you not know, the, one. N- none of it is brand new tech that we haven't seen yet. That seems a shame given, you know, how much noise we've been making about electric cars for a while now. Um, but let's wait and see. We, I, w- I hope we will be impressed. I hope we'll be surprised and impressed um, that some of these cars will blow us away, mm. that in real life we'll get in some of these things and go, this makes sense, oh, this is good, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Because at the moment we're just reading stats off a, of an Auto Express article and looking at some pictures. But Stats we've already seen, by the way, from previous models that have been coming out over the last few, three or four years. But that's what I mean. But maybe when we get in, when we, when we really yeah. experience stuff, it will, it will come into fruition. But anyway, well, let me share the little tidbit that I got, which was that alongside all of this, this year we should also catch wind of the LaFerrari replacement. Oh, the new Ferrari like hypercar with an engine. Yes, a so big one. stealing quite a lot from that 499 Le Mans car. Okay, so I don't really know much more, um, mm. but I believe the customers, invited customers, uh, will be getting first previews probably at the world finals the finale mondiale uh event that happens usually around october november fine um that that's what i believe and will make sense because we're 10 years on yeah so then yeah. we will probably have a debut early 2025 i think but let's see you never know they could surprise us we might not hear anything about it at all but um i was told by someone in the know that that was happening so um, well it would make complete sense for it to yeah, happen yeah so that could be very exciting um we might learn more about porsche's mission x who knows not sure we're going to see a mclaren hypercar this year but mm. could surprise us yeah um so plenty plenty to still go on we haven't even talked about the fact that the rev welto is going to be landing this year hopefully we'll get an experience in and around that yeah yeah which is exciting. And a few other cars, 750S from McLaren. There's some very positive reviews of that. Um, so some other cars which launched or got unveiled last year that we should see and feel on the road this year. Yeah. Um, and I know of a number of events happening in the next few months that will mean that we can get to check some stuff out. So <laughs> let us know in the comment section below if there's a few other things that, that you've caught wind of or you've seen articles about. Um, shout out, thanks again to Auto Express for, for their article and for us using that to kind of pinpoint some cars that we want to chat about. Um, but that, that draws an end to this week's episode. Uh, flown by. Flown by. Yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, as ever, uh, if you want to um, to check out our episode, subscribe now to this YouTube channel. You can listen to these episodes a little bit earlier um, uh, in the week on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. You can follow Tony. He's at Tony Gravel Car Sales on most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass. No stock watch this week because, well, we were watching the stock of the future Uh, (laughs) but we'll be back with you next week for another episode with some of our usual formats and features Uh, so stay safe stay healthy and we will see you next week bye bye see ya